sometimes in my line of work, I see uh, more than one problem um, coming in with a single device. And until the first problem is resolved, we don't even know about the secondary issue or some other issue that may be laying underneath it. And that's what I'm saying is that you sometimes would not know uh, exactly how your uh, case is going to develop throughout the entire procedure. And sometimes you gotta be ready for these surprises. I don't know how different people react to these types of surprises. If you run into similar situations, let me know how you handle them and uh, maybe uh, we can start a discussion here. But enjoy the video guys, let me know what you think. Inside we have a PCB that looks like this. Two chips, very similar to Lexar design. Actually, uh, some older Lexars I think were running with this design. Something tells me I need to put my gloves on for this case because we're gonna be soldering today. <laughs> when it came in, I noticed that the back here had tons of corroded pads, but I cleaned it all up and it doesn't look like any of them are broken. So no soldering needs to be done there. We'll dive deep into this card in a second. Let's just see what the interface comes up with. So I slide this in to the just regular generic card reader. Power up. We have physical status, 130 milliamp consumption. If we go into read, we get hit with the busy state. Yeah, so as you can see, it does an ID. It would have happened much, much sooner, much, much quicker if uh, the ID was um, being produced. We end up with a transcend uh, card reader <laughs> recognition. We don't need this. Let me turn it off. This memory card, knowing its design and knowing its uh, weak spots. First things first, the thickness of this PCB is extremely, extremely thin, right? We can tell that it's very flexible. Place where it's going to be flexible the most is the place that isn't bolstered by these solder balls. You see the where the chips mount to the board, these solder balls attach two uh, pieces together, making them stronger. But in here, in the middle, we don't have anything providing any sort of extra support. All it is, is just this material which houses our controller. Controller is on the back side here. So often enough what I see with these cards is that they fracture somewhere along this controller line here in the back. Here I don't see anything like that, which is great because if we had this issue, uh, the chip off recovery would be the only route. But if the controller is alive, most of the time the next go-to thing to find out is how attached are these chips and even right now without focusing on it I can tell that they're not very much attached because you see this chip here is holding on well from what I can tell from that first pin but this chip right here if you look into the split you see, I'm just gently lifting on it and the chip is getting launched off. So chances are, I don't know if you, maybe you missed it. Let me do it again. Put some extra light in there. Maybe that will make it look a bit easier to see. There, you see those solder balls? If I apply a tiny bit of pressure, you see how they lift off? Oh yeah, there's a wide open gap. In order to reinitiate safe mode, we need to remove uh, first chip in the sequence, unless we know the test point to activate it. I don't know the test point on this unit, so uh, without guessing, I'm just gonna say that most likely the easiest way to uh, get it to a safe mode would be through removing both of these chips. Before I remove any chip, I want to make sure I know their sequence as they came off. So I'm going to notch them. This is going to be my chip one. And this is going to be my chip two. 
Notching them is my preferred method now over using like a marker because when we use flux and alcohol later to clean the chips, you can get rid of the <laughs> writing on it from the marker very easily. And um, well, then you're gonna be guessing which one was first and which was second. And that's not cool. Right, so add flux. So let's pull the chip number two first because I know for sure that this one is uh, damaged. So here's what we're missing as far as the pads. Oof. No, we're missing. We're, we're missing far too many pads, guys. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Even if we don't remove, need to redo all of them. Even 15 is already too much. This card can be very easily resolved as chip off, very close to the original condition. So I'm not gonna be, um, I'm not gonna be spending half half of my day trying to repair these pads. This is, even with the copper pad kit, it's still a ton of work. If our life doesn't depend on it, let's not make it look like it is. Right? Just gonna pop these chips into PC3000 and uh, get a perfect read out of them. Because this device stopped working for no other reason than this physical disconnection. Which means most likely the chips are gonna be totally fine. I was hoping maybe there was a one <laughs> pad that's missing, maybe two at most. Well, three would be, you know, maybe considerable challenge, but 20, hell no. Unfortunately, I don't have too many of these boards. I would have used like a donor board. I have ton of um, uh, different similar looking but different boards from uh, Lexar but uh, this specific design I don't have so I'm just gonna get rid of the flux and this is gonna go into a bag all on its own let's clean chips and start uh, the, the readout this is what a 64 gig unit Okay, two hours will be done.
center them start a new task and uh, give it a read it's ID Let's see the parameters. So yeah, 32 gigs per chip, we're good. So there are two banks only. Uh, read this. Read the chip. Actually, let's do the direct read first. Just to make sure we all uh, line up and there is no noise in the chip. Page designer, bit view. That doesn't look right. I'm not sure why it's showing up as uh, blank, but it's showing up as blank. Trying to figure out what happened uh, in this case specifically is uh, not easy because a uh, client who sent me this card is not the owner of the card. It's somebody who is providing the service for that person. Most likely this card uh, was uh, just the wrong card that wasn't working. Sometimes I can see how uh, in the panic mode you can just start scrambling through all your cards and uh, find the card that doesn't work and then you maybe forget which one you used and if you have more than one non-functional card you may accidentally send a wrong one in for the service <laughs> i'm just super stoked that i didn't want to repair this unit if i repair those 21 pads and saw that the card is blank i would just be probably i would just be really disappointed but more importantly i would probably uh, second guess my repair work which would make, drive me insane. I really feel like I'm a perfectionist when it comes down to the work I do. And uh, I don't know, I don't have the sense of needing to quit when it's time to quit. If I was quitting too early, I would never be able to learn things that I know today. I would never be able to apply these things for future cases. So, um, you know, experience guys is the best thing you can obtain from your daily daily work so with that i'll leave you and i'll see you all in the next episode hopefully guys you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up subscribe and comment down below i'll see you next time